Uh, I'll tell you what I told the team, and then I'll open up for questions. Uh, just talk to them about how it's a win business, and the fun is in the winning. And we all know that. You know, they've, they've been trained that way. They understand that. Uh, but I told them it doesn't change the fact that I'm incredibly proud of them and how they fought in the lot in in the second half of this ball game, uh, through a lot of adversity and gave themselves a chance to win against an incredibly talented football team. Uh, and that's something we never could have done in years past. Uh, we, we never would have been able to to rally around a freshman quarterback and uh, give him a chance to make some plays and and make this thing a really good game against a great team. So, again, that's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of uh, – and I'm proud of Chase, quite frankly. Like, I thought he went in there and battled his butt off, made some plays, kept things alive, made some throws. And um, – so, again, with a, a lot of adversity thrown at us during the week, uh, in the game from an injury standpoint, and some external factors as well that were uh, didn't go our way tonight. We uh, we did not win the game, as you all know, uh, but I'm proud of this football team. With that, I'll open up for any questions. Jake, you that you guys to bring back to the I'm really not sure. I was with the defensive staff. By the time I got in with the offensive staff, somebody let me know he was in with the doctors. So I, I don't know. Uh, I do know that what was told to me is, yes, he finished the drive, uh, but he didn't remember the drive or the score. And uh, if you remember two plays before we scored or three plays before we scored, there was a targeting foul t thrown and then removed. And all we talk about is player safety in this game. And what I was told is the uh, defender turned his helmet into him. And to me, that is a very clear definition. So, uh, yeah, we played the second half with a true freshman quarterback who played his butt off for us. And a defense that stood up, got takeaways, and kept fighting. And special teams that really uh, won the day for us. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talked before about how hot we'd been in the first quarter uh, going into Tulane. And the truth is, uh, SMU had been even hotter. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the number was, but it was extraordinary. And um, for our defense to keep us in that game, for special teams to get that block punt, turns it into a touchdown. You know, you're sitting, you're sitting in a pretty good place where you give your offense a chance to regroup and get their footing. Uh, the, the hard part of that was our defense played so many plays in that first quarter. And uh, even in the first half, I think we had 52 plays on the sheet and 46 officially at halftime. And that, that was because of the offensive inefficiencies, as well as a couple of times we couldn't get off the field on third down. But uh, we got to go back to starting faster offensively. We, we can't go three and out on our first possession we can't throw a pick on the first play of our second one. And, and again, that's not to place blame or anything like that. It was a tip ball. It's, it was the right play. Uh, the defense made a great play. But it's just, it, it's we've got to start faster for our football team if we want to have success against a great team. You know, it's interesting because, you know, last week you asked a question about the both lines. And as I went back and looked at it, I really thought our offensive line did not get handled very, very badly by Tulane. I thought they played really well uh, after watching the film. You know, tonight to start the game, we were not holding any blocks. We were not getting the job done for the quarterback. Uh, it, it was one or two people. And then we settled down. And some of that stuff is, that you mentioned – allowed us to settle down and, and get cleaner looks. and uh, But ultimately, it, it comes down to me versus you. And, like, can I do my 111? Because when we were doing that in that first half, we moved the ball and we had some success. So that, that really became the challenge. I do think Marcus Tuiasosopo and, uh, did a great job play, having a great plan and great answers. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think all, everything you mentioned, I think, really played into it. But you're right. Uh, and those, those first few plays, you were like, oh, Two of the three, I felt like pressure was there now.
Sure felt like it. You got to say it. I can't say it. Yeah, I mean, that was hard, man. Never felt that way. The way I felt tonight, not since I coached like high school in some small town. those guys fought that's what it comes down to I mean think about that for a second like we didn't have Gabe after the first series in in the second in the third quarter right um lost Conti during the week Jojo Jean was down uh coming into the game those guys just fought together and for each other and that's again that's a beautiful thing uh it's really cool and he can talk more about what was said in the huddle he could talk more about the six solo tackles he had when he was coming up and hitting hitting running backs in the backfield. I don't know if he had a tackle on a receiver. He was having to make plays in the run game all night long, and they did a good job covering his man. Heck no. We talked about UTSA. You know how we're going to take this, Matt. It's going to be one at a time. It's not going to be about margin. It's not going to be about anything. It's going to be about, like, I mean, they all can see big picture. They're smart kids. They go to Rice. But for us, we're going to talk about the things that matter and preparing the right way. And what a big win it would be next week in, in the Alamo Dome if we can have a great week of practice and find a way to get that thing done. You ask Chase instead of me. Uh, look, it's that short yardage snap is is really unique, and when you haven't got a whole lot of reps on it, it's it's different. Like if you just imagine the center's butt's about nine inches off the ground, you're low. It's almost like a magician in terms of the ball handling in the backfield and seeding the ball to make sure one back goes through before you hand it. And quite frankly, Chase just hasn't had enough time on task with that. Shoki has because he played quarterback for us in games last year, and so that's why we chose to do that. Um, again, it's not something Chase can't do by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that he hasn't had enough time on task. Yeah, and again, the reason I said that about Chase is because he was a freshman, right? Because he's he's a little wet behind the ears. He got here in January. So you don't ever want those dudes to play the most important position in football, uh, especially in a West Coast volume offense. So it was certainly not by design tonight to have to lead us to try to win the game. Uh, this is the third game he's played in this year, you know, and uh, he's he's made a difference every game he's come in. He's affected the game positively. So uh, that's, that's what we expect him to do. But tonight the burden was strapped on his back and certainly proud of how he answered the call. And I'm proud of after a, maybe a series of the offense wondering what's going on. Like, I don't know if they knew the JT wasn't coming back out. I didn't find out until we left the locker room going back on the field after halftime. So there might have been a little shock and awe there. And, and once they all settled in, they started rallying with him and realizing that he can lead our offense. And so for that true freshman over there, I thought he did a great job. Really proud of him. Fabulous. Fabulous. 11 yards of carry. Uh, had a screen callback that was uh, a big explosive play, a game-changing play. Uh, 50, 50 or 60 yards, probably 60 yards, I think, snap from about the minus 40. 55. Yeah. Huge. I mean, and just battled all night long. And he's become our short yards and goal line back with Dalen being down and trust him completely with everything. I think the answer is yes to all those things. I think we're a much better team. We're a much deeper team. Uh, but I just think back to any time we lost a quarterback, like it didn't go well. You know, I can't think of any instance where it did. Uh, I guess La Tech in 2021, we made a quarterback change, but we didn't lose a quarterback. And uh, I don't know if we've ever had a chance with the ball in our hand 
on the last possession, certainly to go beat a team like SMU that's uh, got so many talented players and will be a member of the ACC next year. Yeah, I think it just shows how much they're fighting for each other. Like we talked in pregame about the power of of love and belief. And those those are two powerful things. And when you really love the people around you and when you really believe in what you're doing and believe in yourself and believe in your teammates, you're a force to be reckoned with. And that's that's what they are and that's the way they're playing. And they gave us a chance tonight. Um I think it was coming out of halftime, and then I just I heard that JT wasn't coming back out, unfortunately, because I root for him all the time. I learned so much from him just being in a, the room with them and just hurts to see somebody go down, especially somebody so impactful for our team. Um, when I came in, I was just ready to do whatever Coach called. Why did Barney see the sideline? How much did he see the um, it's, it's like gold. I mean, he has so much experience, and I just try to merge the way certain aspects of his game with my game, and then just to improve on. So I watch, I see him every day in practice. Um, I see how he studies, I see how he does everything like that. I just try to reflect some of the things that he does. Um, I'm just appreciative for him. Like whenever I'm in the game, um, I always lean on him for like any advice or anything like that, because he has a lot, he has a lot to offer. And he's always been that like helping hand, just easy and accessible. So after I got hit the first time, um, yeah, uh, after the first series, kind of, kind of got hit in the leg, but um, after that, kind of found the rhythm. Um, well, in practice, I, I don't really rep that. I'm usually on the other side, and um, Shoki's usually repping that, and he's been doing it for a while now. And I just don't have that many reps at that. So we've been rolling with that in practice, so that's the same way we did it in the game. Uh, I knew that going in. I mean, SU was a great team. Um, they have great players. We kind of saw that watching film going in, but I'm just so appreciative of my teammates, O-line, receivers, everybody embraced me when I did go in the game, especially some young freshmen just now getting in halftime, especially when we have such a great player in JT. Um, and I'm just thankful for my coaches putting me in good situations. I mean, it hurts. We one play away. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I just I wish we could have won that game. And myself, I just – Look forward to how to make that one play going forward. <laughs> There's still a lot of things I have to learn. Um, I'll leave that up to anybody else have to say that. I know there's some things I need to learn and improve on right now. Um, kind of just trusting what we're watching film every day with Coach Tui. Um, trusting that we, we write down the notes, how we game plan versus team, just taking that all in the mind, like going up against them. Um, we knew they had a great team going in. Um, and just being comfortable and just leaning on the coaching and trusting the coaching throughout the game was the main point for me. Uh, Dean's great. Many times in the game, something big is going to happen every time. So it makes it a lot more easier on me, especially just giving the ball and he makes something happen. Um, well, first of all, I just want to um, start by saying thank you. you know, how grateful I am for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and my, my family and my teammates and my coaches here. But um, could you repeat that question? 
I mean, man, the, the the first half was a struggle, but you know, like Bruce said, we we just kept fighting. Uh, and there's 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 so many guys that I could sit up here and talk about that just you know from the Tyson Flowers and how he stepped up for us tonight it's huge. Um, Trey D, Treshawn Devones, how you know wonderful job he did tonight. Um, Gabe Taylor for the way he, you know he went down and he just if you could hear the way you know he was speaking to us on the sidelines and in the huddle and stuff like that. Um, we just we just had to rally behind him and, and fight for him. So being tired is not an option. You know, it's, it's always next man up or if you're out there, do your job. So uh, that's that's what it is. I mean, coming in, as a defense, we're never going in any game thinking we can't play with anybody. We expect to win. We expect to win our one-on-ones. Expect to dominate, but uh, speaking about your question, um, in the first quarter, I think we just, you know, we settled down a little bit and we got back to us and who we are. Um, as a defense, man, we we just we we rely on that confidence and you know just plan plan our, our you know our game and um, playing with our swag and stuff like that. Um, but I just think that SMU offense hasn't played a defense like ours and hasn't really been in a dog fight like that. And once they saw that they were in that. We fed off of that, and you know that's 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 what we do. Um, we no retreat, no surrender. That's 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 our saying. So we never go into any game thinking we can't compete with anybody. We expect to win. So that's what we do. No, you're fine. Yeah, uh, credit to them, man. I mean, we knew coming in, like, they were a deep shot team. They wanted to take, uh, throw the ball down the field. They wanted to take the deep shots. And I think we did a pretty good job with that tonight. Um, All of their receivers are pretty good receivers. And all of them, I'm pretty sure all of them have over 200 yards on the season. So they spread the ball around a lot. So uh, credit to them, you know. But I think we did a good job containing that tonight. And, yeah.